Well, hey, at least right now, the A's are better than the Astros. You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, A's fans, and welcome to Locked On A's. This is the podcast where we talk about the, well, for right now, Oakland A's all year long. I am your guest host for this week. My name is Paul Francis Sullivan, but please, by all means, I demand that you call me Sully. I've been a baseball podcaster for a very long time, over a decade. I've done TV stuff and everything, uh, including earning my Emmy nomination at KQED in San Francisco. I've been at Oakland A's playoff games in several different decades, and I'm taking you through these beautiful months where, at least for a while, we can still all yell, let's go Oakland. Uh, Follow us at Locked on A's on Twitter or whatever it's called now. Or on Instagram, I am your pal Sully at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. From brakes to exhaust and beyond, our sponsor, eBay Motors, has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive. With all the parts you need and the prices that you want, it's easy to bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available for U.S. customers. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk a little bit about what was kind of a frustrating loss to the World Series champion, Texas Rangers. I'm going to read a couple of the comments that came from the episodes that I've done uh, up until this point. And then we're going to hear from Melissa Lockhart, who has tremendous connections to the athletics and the athletics. She's a writer and editor for The Athletic Magazine, which has become the magazine of record of the sports world. It used to be Sports Illustrated. And she knows, she's forgotten more about the A's than some of us will ever, ever know. And so we're going to talk about, obviously, the move to Sacramento and other things. We talked, we had a really long conversation, and we're going to play parts of it here and on the other show. By the way, normally I'm the host of the Locked On MLB podcast, but do you know what? Uh, there was uh, a vacuum that needed to be filled here, especially as news has been coming fast and furious with Oakland. Hey, uh, let's just take a quick peek at what happened. The day after Shea Langoliers hit those three wonderful home runs and gave the A's kind of a startling win against the defending World Series champs, admit it. Can you admit it? We can all admit it that when the A's scored in the first, the the Rangers' defense was kind of sort of terrible in the first inning, and then uh, Nevin hits the home, hits the uh, single to make it one nothing before the Rangers even came to bat. You could admit it. You started thinking, they're going to win today, aren't they? They're going to win. They're going to win. And then you started thinking about, wait a second, what would happen if they do win? Could they be sneaking up? Because if they beat the Rangers, and you know the Angels are going to lose, the A's are going to sneak up just a little bit to try to get in first place. Yeah, I know it's still, it's basically mid-April, but wouldn't it be fun to be able to have, if you look back at baseballreference.com, at the scores and schedule and results of the 2024 A's, that they could say, at least for a day or so, they are in first place. Well, it didn't happen today. They fell to four and eight. Uh, Stripling got the loss. Uh, uh, Garcia got a two-run single. Old friend Marcus Semyon got an RBI double, and uh, the, you know, it just was, uh, there was, uh, I believe it was, uh, Geloff hit a home run. By the way, Geloff has been phenomenal. Lionel Lears had those three home runs, he's been terrific. And, uh, you know, we're going to see, where you know, this is, can they sort of dust themselves off from this pretty decisive loss to the defending World Series champions? Uh, we will see. Uh, this is being dropped on Thursday, and um, right now I can tell you that Sears is getting the start against Gray. Neither Gray with Texas nor Sears with the A's have necessarily looked great, but it is a day game. 
So check in early and we'll see how they do. And maybe get a series win out of that. Maybe get a series win out of this. And then on, you know, as we're filing our taxes, by the time the, the series is over, um, the A's are going to be playing the Nats in the uh, Which Fan Base Loves Sean Doolittle More series. And we'll see. Take your chances. At this time, I am not the fun police. I am not the fun police at all. So if you want to get excited about early A's wins, why not? Uh, I'm going to go just sort of read some of the uh, – we got a lot of really good um, uh, responses for some of the uh, early uh, shows that I've done here as your guest host. Uh, this is uh, – um, I had a – when I had my John Fisher and the A's don't have a plan episode, which we dropped just a couple of days ago, uh, we got a lot of viewers on that page. And um, – and uh, by the way, uh, is 300 uh, Mikey four says we even lost our locked on A's host. Uh, thank you. Appreciate me filling in. Um, uh, Joseph Thomas 3488 says as a life as a Marlins fan and a lifelong Expos fan, I commiserate with A's fans. Yes, those are there's a lot of misery amongst Expos fans and soon A's fans are going to be joining them in the world of teams that have uh, lost it. Um, and let's see, uh, uh, Brian Vallette says, born in the East Bay, grew up in the North. And you know what? I now reside in Vegas. We'd like to have a major league baseball team. But personally, I don't want this team moving here. That seems to be a prevailing thought, even from people I know who are in Vegas. that We don't mind a team. They just don't want to swipe the A's. Uh, he said, it would be nice to have the A's stay in Oakland while the Vegas gets a new team name. Um, I hope if the A's move that they, you know, I have to say if, because they're still, they're not building a stadium. There's no stadium there yet. There's no plan there yet. Uh, I would hope that they would allow the, a, a changing of the name. It's not the Washington Expos. It's not the Baltimore Browns and it's not the Minnesota Senators. All right. Allow those names to be in the, uh, in the old, uh, in their old place. Um, uh, this, uh, Karen D. Green says, A's fans, Fisher has given you fan free agency. Want to be a Sacto age? Want to stay in the Bay Area with the Giants? Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. If you want, you A's fans don't need to show their loyalty to anybody. If they want to join another team, I know it'll be hard to bite the bullet and become a Giant fan, but uh, uh, I get it. I totally get it. Um, neither the city nor county of Sacramento have any funds. This is from Dweller 415. Have any funds available to construct a new Beijing League Stadium? Uh, and of course, uh, West Sacramento is in Yolo County. And um, and he basically is going on saying no one is going to finance a, team, a stadium in Sacramento. Well, so far, they don't have a plan in Las Vegas either. And... Um, Someone said I was spelled John Fisher wrong. Do you know thanks for the uh, thanks for the spell check, and um, and okay, this is one that's interesting. Uh, uh, Tim Fairs, this is this is an interesting comment that he wrote. Tim Fairs three zero six one says Sutter Health Park is a minor league facility that's not up to major league standards. The MLPA, the Players Association, should veto the Sacramento deal. Now I can't claim to know if they have any sort of veto power. But I don't understand why the union is not screaming bloody murder about this. You know that the the, the clubhouses, they have to go out to straightaway center field. I mean, this is not a major league facility. And they're going to try to what? They, they've been making some nonsense about how they are going to try to have uh, increase the payroll every year. With a with a small attendance, and yes, I know it'll be about the same attendance they have in Oakland. But if you'll notice, their their salaries are kind of sort of low, and you're going to try to in, attract players to come to the A's in Sacramento while playing in a minor league facility. I can't see it happening. I can't see. I can't see that the players' association is fine with this. When you also throw in the fact that there is no real plan to put a team in Las Vegas right now, because where the hell are they going to play 
and everything. We still haven't established that. So I'm going to do read through some of the other comments a little bit later, but those are some that sort of stuck out with me. If you have any thoughts about the move, if you have any thoughts about the team this year, make sure to put your comments right down here. Now, when we come back from this little break here, we're talking with Melissa Lockhart of The Athletic about this current situation with the A's and do you want a whole bunch of other things. Let's hear from a friend from Policy Genius. Policy Genius is a smarter way to buy insurance. Their proprietary technology makes it easy to compare personalized quotes and policies from top rated insurers side by side. Policy Genius team of licensed experts is here to answer questions, handle paperwork, and help you make decisions with confidence. They work for you, not for the insurance companies. Exploring coverage options to making policies adjustment for you, your life changes. Policy Genius is your advocate at every step. And Policy Genius is committed to your information remaining secure. Security is a top priority. They use industry-leading security practices to help keep your information safe. So check life insurance off your to-do list in no time with Policy Genius. Head to policygenius.com slash lockdown MLB. Click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com slash lockdown MLB. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The winning formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performances. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need and the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only and exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available for U.S. customers. That's eBay Motors. Hey, let me ask you something. Do you find yourself watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you to bring every day the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channel app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, which your team every day. All right, here is going to be part one of my conversation with Melissa Lockhart, who is a writer-editor for The Athletic and an expert on the Oakland A's. Welcome back, Melissa Lockhart. You've been a guest on the show before, both Locked On A's and Locked On MLB. And uh, I'm glad you're back, but I'm not glad you're back for this reason. This is a bad reason to have you on. I wish I was... We were on here talking about how the A's are stunning baseball with their 2002-esque winning streak. But uh, uh, how are you doing, all things considered? Well, it, it's it's been a rough. I was actually on on vacation, but last week um, I was at the opener, and I think you know the writing was was pretty well on the wall that this was coming. I think it's still hard to hear it when it finally happens. You know, I think that that's that's always the the holding out hope until the actual um, news is delivered. But it, it, you know, it was, it was pretty clear on Sunday before opening day when I was in Sacramento and all of a sudden they're rolling out these new um, facilities within their clubhouse that they were very quickly putting together that, you know, that why would they be doing that just for a regular river cat season that this was probably coming. And then just the mood of Thursday, it's, it seemed like a goodbye. So it, it's certainly not surprising, but it, it's a tough week for sure. Yeah, it is like one of those breakups that take that was like we should have broken up a long time ago, but we just kept on going. Uh, but it's just so many things that happen along the way. I've seen franchises move, and I, and it's never 
it's never a clean thing, but I don't remember with the possible exception of the Montreal Expos. I've never seen it this sloppy. And even with the Expos, as bad as that was, that was essentially Major League Baseball taking over a team and trying to make a deal with Baltimore. This has just been at every level has felt like uh, a kid doing the their homework on the school bus. Like they've had years to try to figure something out here. And every level it's been done in a shady way and also in a disingenuous way, right down to letting the groundskeepers know they're fired via Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, which is, I mean, you know, in, in considering that that is the best grounds crew in baseball and it has been for 25, 30 years, um, it's shocking that they would treat it that way. I mean, I, I think that is, I think the most mind boggling part of all of this is that they have scripts for this in Oakland, right? This is not the first team that has left. Uh, the other two teams did it in a way that, you know, it obviously hurt the fans quite a bit. And, and the Warriors one was is different, obviously, because it was only 15 minutes away. But like, you know, those were painful goodbyes, but they were done in a way that was respectful and transparent and, and, and you know, enveloping of the fans that were going to be going there. And this is not even done. I mean, that's the kind of crazy thing. They've made this decision because they're going to get to play somewhere for free. And that's ultimately what this comes down to. They're going to get much of their, um, you know, local broadcast contract, which was important to them. So essentially they're making more money by basically kicking the can down the road again for another three to four to five years. And, and you notice that there's extra option years in this deal. So the Vegas thing is not anywhere closer to happening. In fact, it may be now further away than it was a, a year ago. So I think, you know, what we're looking at here is Major League Baseball essentially enabling an ownership group that is just in it for the money and transparently so, and with no attempt to wanting to win and um, has no willingness at all to put a stop to it. And it, it's, it's really mind boggling. Well, I'm, you know what? I was going to bring this up later, but I'm glad you brought this up. Now it came up a little more organically. Uh, I am not a hundred percent positive. We are ever going to see the Las Vegas A's. I mean, think about since, I mean, really since the early 2000s, we've heard the Fremont A's, we've heard the San Jose A's, we've heard the, was it the Mills College? Was that, or what was the college that they were going to put, it, was it? It was Laney College. Oh, Laney College, that's right, Laney College. Uh, forgive me, I've lost track of all the places, and all, the, we could create a gallery of all the muse of the, the, the renderings we've seen. Um, Howard Terminal, uh, Jack London Square. I mean, how many, I mean, in the parking lot right next to it, I mean, it's been everywhere. San Jose looked like it was the ideal place with the Giants on the right for some reason. Uh, I know why, every night. I know the reason, but there's no reason. They, they don't need those rights anymore. They got a great ballpark, but that's not, that's neither here nor there. So I I have seen no evidence that there's going to be a ballpark built in Las Vegas. And uh, more than one person has said, and, I'm, and you kind of intimated that they, this deal with Sacramento is oddly open-ended for a team that's uh, essentially crashing on the couch until they finally build this new place. Yeah, and, you know, free is ultimately why they're there, right? right. Um, for whatever reason, the Sacramento Kings who, who purchased the, the River Cats a, a couple years ago are going to let them come into this ballpark. They seem to think it's a showcase for Sacramento. They're not even playing in Sacramento. It's West Sacramento. It's, yeah. it's you know a different jurisdiction. There is no evidence that the city of Sacramento would necessarily have any appetite for public funding. And there's it's very clear that John Fisher is not going to build anywhere. He's not given any money. So unless you know the Kings are moving in to purchase the team, which you know maybe is possible, but Fisher continues to say it's not for sale. Um, you know, this seems to be yet another person who's going to be taken advantage of and strung along with kind of nice commentary until he gets what he wants. And, and who knows what he wants in particular? Um, you know, this dalliance with Vegas could be just an ability to buy land there to do something else. You know, we don't know. But ultimately, it's not about winning. It's not about fielding a, a competitive Major League Baseball team. It's not about making Major League Baseball better. It's not about the fans. And it's not about the players. It, this is all about two people in charge of this this organization and ultimately a lot more people are going to suffer for it yeah and god i mean 
don't we have a bunch of crazy billionaires out there? Isn't there one crazy billionaire willing to step in? Now, I got to just show you my my plan. And A's fans, uh, I bought the, the billion-dollar lotto ticket here. If I win, I still need other investors, but I can be the main investor, and, and I will take so, over the team. I mean, you know, there are purportedly multiple groups willing to buy the team and keep them in Oakland and have been for several years. They've made some like Joe Lacob have made their intentions somewhat publicly known. Others right. have not publicly named themselves because they really do want to try to have this happen. And Major League Baseball has you know, insisted on not having um groups sort of be known before they're actually bidding on something. Um, but yeah, the Bay Area has no shortage of billionaires. We have shortage of a lot of other things, but billionaires we have in plenty. And there is no question that of all the three markets we're talking about here, the Bay Area still remains the better of the three markets for a two team, even to, even to share that market and even to have the smaller piece of that market would be better than being in either Sacramento or Las Vegas. And so from a business standpoint, it doesn't make sense. From an expansion standpoint, it doesn't make sense because as long as this main, remains unresolved, expansion's not going to happen. And, and I have serious doubts expansion's ever going to happen, to be honest with you. Um, but, you know, it's again, it's it's enabling someone who's shown no interest in actually being a competitive major league owner, which is, is mind boggling. To me. Hey, guess what's happening now in sports? Just about everything. Got Major League Baseball. You've had college basketball. You got the... NBA Finals coming up pretty soon. You got the pursuit of the Stanley Cup. I bet there's other things too. And guess what? With them all in full swing, FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. All in an app that's safe and secure and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and make your first automatic win. FanDuel, that's America's number one sportsbook. Hey, this is a reminder that LockedOn has begun the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on the Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channel app. LockedOn Sports Day is here for you. 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV's channel app. Okay, let's go back to our conversation with Melissa Lockhart of The Athletic. Well, I'll disagree with you on one thing here, and I don't like to disagree, but I will disagree with you. I am positive that expansion is going to happen, which is the reason why Major League Baseball has, I believe it was unanimously approved it, even though the move makes no sense. Vegas is a horrible market. It's a, as I've said before, it's a Venn diagram of all the bad places you could have if, of a relatively small media market, a fan base that is indifferent, and it features a lot of recent transplants who inevitably have uh, emotional ties to other teams. There are good places to put if you have to move the A's. And I've said many times, I don't want to move the A's. But if you have to move the A's, Nashville could make sense. Charlotte could make sense. Portland could make sense. San Antonio. There are markets. Hell, even Salt Lake City could make more, makes more sense to me than freaking Las Vegas. I don't think Salt Lake City is a very good, but you could have an you could have an easy rivalry with the the Rockies because inevitably they're going to realign. But I do think baseball is willing to sign off on that and willing to sign off on the Rays. Just mind bogglingly say we're going to build a stadium right next to where we're currently playing, even though all I've been hearing for a quarter century is they built it in the wrong place. So let's build a new park right next to it. They want those two situations solved so they can get the expansion fee money based on all the money they lost from COVID. It's, you know, every time every time the owners get a big hit to their pocketbook, whether it was collusion, gave us four new teams, and COVID is going to give us, I think, probably a team in Nashville and probably a team in, I think, the other team will be San Antonio, but what no one's asked me. But uh, I think that's the reason why they're approving this. But, I mean... Melissa, they're approving it. They don't have a place to build it, really. They don't have a plan to build it. They don't have the funding for it. They don't have a city that wants it. 
what are they even approving at this point? Right. Well, and, you know, and, and, and on the expansion front, I, I think, though, you know, Nashville remains the cudgel for Chicago. Right. And now. Kansas right. City. So uh, I that that's why I doubt expansion is going to happen only because they are going to continue to hold this over cities that aren't willing to give money if they have cities that are willing to do it. And, you know, you look at the San Antonio situation and, and the situation they had with their minor league ballpark and trying to get funding for that. And it didn't happen as quickly. You know, there are some jurisdictions that have already shown in different situations and unwillingness to put public financing. I think Nashville is going to have a tough time if they want public financing, just based on the fact that the Titans thing was pretty unpopular. So, right. um, you know, you're coming on the heels in a lot of these cases, but the NFL moved a lot quicker. They got their funding and now major league baseball is coming in second and everyone's realizing, Hey, that wasn't such a good deal. Now, what do we do? And, um, and they're quickly running out of places unless they start expanding into Mexico and the UK um, to put major league teams that are going to get funded by people that are not their billionaires. So um, that, I think, is, you know, remains a question. But either way, this Las Vegas thing is, is nowhere close to being resolved. I think, you know, there's, there's legislation that, you know, may or may not impact it, but certainly might slow it down. Bally's is like, you know, in a lot of financial trouble. So if they're not going to be the partner for whatever this resort is going to be, um, then someone else has got to come in there and buy it and decide to develop it. And I was talking to some folks from Las Vegas on opening night and, you know, they made the point that the, um, and I don't really understand gaming licenses or, you know, I've been, I've, I've gambled on the strip like three times ever. And it was for like, all I know about, all I know about gaming licenses is yeah. Michael Corleone demanded that the gaming license be paid for by Senator Geary and Godfather right. too. Yeah, exactly. And that is literally it. But apparently the Tropicana has one that is so valuable that they were like, it is inconceivable to them that you would waste a cent like a centimeter of land on anything that isn't a casino. And so like th that land should be worth a lot more money to someone who wants to develop something different than what they're looking to do. Whereas North right. Las Vegas, there's all this room, but they wouldn't be in the postcard of the strip. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that have to happen. Um, you know, Sacramento, again, it, this has been something that's been talked about a long time. When they built this this park in, in Sacramento, there, there was this uh, idea that they could just drop a third deck on the top of it and make it a major league stadium, which, again, I, and I have nothing against, like, Rayleigh Field now, Sutter Health, you know, Health um, Park is a really great AAA stadium. It's aged pretty well, considering now it's, you know, it's getting to 25 years. But, um the parking is a disaster. It took me an hour and 45 minutes to get out of that parking lot on Sunday when I was there for the Giants sellout scrimmage. Um, the lines for food for that were incredibly long. Like it's not a major league facility for fans. It's not going to be a major league facility for the ball players who have to go out into center field to get to their clubhouse. There's no bathrooms in the bullpens, you know, all that kind of stuff. So those are not easy fixes. And you're talking about four years of, you know, like an entire prime for any player they plan to develop over the next decade, you know, is going to be stuck in a transient situation. It's ridiculous. How, how did it get to this point where, yeah. where it's like no, nothing seems planned? Nothing seems to, but beyond nothing seems planned, nothing seems to have been anticipated. Yeah. This was a 10 year lease that was signed the, the same year they traded UN assessments for John Lester. That was a while ago. That was a that was a that was a that was a whole other rebuild ago for the A's. You know that was the Sean Doolittle, uh, 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 Josh Donaldson, Coco Crisp era of the A's. They've both those players have retired. It's been ten years. My kids were in elementary school. They're in college now. That's been a lot of that's that's two presidential terms and an additional two years to try to figure out. Okay, and if, and it kind of—I mean, let's be blunt. It became clear that Fisher was had no real interest in Howard Terminal or Jack London Square, or you know, we should have—I should have a big wheel back here of just spin of which proposed, you know, uh, Cisco Field, whichever one we're going to go with. So, if that's the case, then you had to have had either something in place like two years ago to say, here's where the ballpark is going to be. They are no closer to forget putting a shovel in the ground. Where the hell is it going to be? I mean, just you very casually just said, well, it probably could be the Tropicana, probably should be this. Wait a minute. We should be hiring cement mixers at this point. We should be saying, we should be 
people should be getting the contract. The only thing that was given was like an uh, an AI rendering that was like something out of The Sims of of a ballpark that was like, wait a minute, where's the where's the foul toy? Where's the bullpen? Where's it? Like there was nothing in that drawing that was uh, that wasn't fantasy, and that's so far the most detailed drawing we have. And they they're not playing in Oakland next year. Yeah, no, I think they're going to be. I think they're going to be in Sacramento for at least five years. Yeah, probably. But you know, and you think about this, they're also now going to be saving. You know, whatever they would have paid at the Coliseum, they're going to be keeping most of their um, local media market money. Right. They're going to be getting revenue sharing, which they aren't supposed to be getting, but now we're getting in this interim amount. And on top of all of that, they're not going to sign anyone. No. You know, so this is all going to be money that they take and they put into their coffers to do God knows what. I know the, the San Francisco Chronicle had a good article, um, you know, that talked about the fact that, like, you know, Fisher basically owns a bunch of land and all sort of views them all as little pieces of his parcel of kingdom of, of, of ownership. And he hasn't doesn't really spend much time thinking about any one particular piece of it more than like another, essentially, I'm, I'm, you know, dramatically summarizing what they wrote. But, um, you know, basically, he doesn't pay much attention to it. And, and if you think of it that way, then okay, maybe this does make sense that he just like checks in on this stuff every couple of months or something. And um, but why Major League Baseball would allow this to happen? I mean, that that's the thing that frustrates me. There are bad owners in every sport, right? You know, we only have to look in Washington and how long it took the NFL to get rid of Dan Snyder um, to know how bad owners can be all over the world. Um, but that we don't have a commissioner who can step in and do anything to direct it to be, you know, done in a way that is aligned with the sport being better and healthier is, is just astonishing to me. And that the rest of these owners are allowing it is is really astonishing. I Thank you so much, Melissa, and thank you all for watching. There's going to be another part of my conversation with Melissa Locker that we'll be playing a little bit later, and well, maybe a couple of things we're going to sprinkle in. So follow us at Locked On A's on Twitter or whatever it's called now, and on Instagram. I am your pal, Sully. I am normally the host of the Locked On MLB podcast. I'm pinch hitting here for the week as well, and I got new episodes here and on that show, so you're double your time with me. Follow me. I'm at Locked On MLB Pods. On Twitter and Instagram, or my personal account is at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Talking A's and lamenting what could be. This has been Locked On A's. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.